Hopefully this thing can go live with no problems tonight, friends. Mm, we are on here. Brother Woodall, I see you. I'm right in people's face, I feel like. Kyra, Kyra Sloan, how is Hawaii? My good friend Kira is in Hawaii. It's a long flight, Kyra. A very long flight. Blair Braswell, buddy, thank you for tuning in. Angie Morgan. Joey Holt, my man, Brother Woodall. I'm getting started a little bit earlier because last week when I was doing this, um, I had some technical difficulties. Got a new house and uh, we almost didn't get started. We almost didn't get lipped off. So I think it's almost, uh, it's almost time to get started. I appreciate everybody. That's right. Hey, we got Joey Hold on here. My cousin, Tina. Thank you. What up, what up? Matt Crane shared my video. Matt Crane. Matt Crane, appreciate it, buddy. We cannot do it without you. Holt. Brittany Renee, thank you for finally getting on here. Hey, Matt. Uh, I appreciate you sharing the stream. Everybody else out there, I would love for you to do the same. Would love for you to share the stream. As a matter of fact, the people that share this stream, there is going to be a, uh, I'm going to start rewarding the people that helped me, the people that shared this stream. Sparkle, I started early, girl. Tom Crager, our favorite newsman. Hey, it's like a little family reunion, right, Tina? Everybody that's on here so far, I appreciate it. If you would like, my mama's joined. You know what that means. My teeth before. Jeff shot in the kitchen. I Jeff, I can't go outside because of our cable's not strong enough. We need a cable man. Matt Crane, safe ten for Hey Matt, thank you for saying that. Good time, Tommy will be up. Um GoodTimeTommy.com will be up hopefully within a month. I think we're hoping to get that out within a month. Right, Matt? And any of you people out there that are looking to uh, learn how to brand yourself, if you want to be, we do need an extender. If you want to learn how to do what I've done, you need to talk to two people. One is Matt Crane or my girl right there, Kathleen, Kathleen Sparkles McWilliams. Hey, Lucas, hope you're doing well, buddy. I saw that healthy dinner you were eating the other night. But um, Kathleen is the girl. Hey, Sean, thank you, buddy. Whoever shares this, I'm going to I'm gonna get them hooked up with some Alley on Main, the Alley on Main gift cards. I'm going to need your help. Brad Elam, buddy. David Latham. I'm already ready for the Thanksgiving party, buddy. Hopefully you're still committed because I can't do the Thanksgiving party without you. Everybody liking this, I appreciate it. Please like, please share. As you can see by the title, I'm going to talk about self-improvement tonight. And any questions that you have, please, please feel free to ask. Uh, the weather man, by the time you get on here, buddy, slingshot's waiting on you. Reach out to Matt Crane. Matt uh, came into our office, man, it's been two or three weeks ago. And he really just blew my mind with his knowledge about people don't understand how online sales, online marketing works. It's so much different. It's your boy, AKA the weatherman. And Matt came in and he helped me and Kathleen. So, hey, Randy Averick, go Wildcats, buddy. If Dave Thomas, our favorite high school quarterback ever in Murfreesboro has joined. If you're looking for a roof, you need to call my buddy, Dave Thomas. When them storms start rolling in, everybody needs to call Dave Thomas this spring. Mike Smallwood, my man. Carrie and Sear, thank you for joining, friends. Not very often you get a $130 million producer. Now we got Belinda Eringer, another like $200 million producer on here. So 
Big show tonight. Somewhat intimidated. David McWilliams. Hey, David. Me and Brittany are going to Miami. Wish you could. Hey, Belinda. I wish you could help us find an affordable place down there because I'm going to meet my hero, Grant Cardone, on April the 13th. He'll be in my notes. But I'm going to talk about uh, about self-improvement tonight. And uh, Shane Bourne, my neighbor, thank you for joining, buddy. Watch him from Memphis. Go roll the bones over in uh, Tunica. Sorry if I have if I sound sick. I've got a little bit of a, si a sinus infection, a head cold. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk about self-improvement. And I have become a, uh, a self-improvement junkie over probably uh, taking the girlfriend to see the boyfriend. That's right. Everybody liking this, I, I really appreciate it. And, man, if you'll share it. I'd Adam Valentine, hey, try fits in the house. Adam Valentine does a great job promoting his business, try fit him and Barry Campbell. Hey, we're going to talk about self-improvement. And, you know, one of the things I'm going to give Adam Valentine credit, he's a young guy. It, the way he talks to his clients, he goes to a much deeper level than just workouts. Adam Valentine has a lot of depth. A lot of knowledge, especially for how young he is. So if you're looking for a trainer out there, people, I heavily, heavily would recommend you talking to Adam Valentine. But, um, hey, Jeff, how are you, man? Thank you for coming on here. Forever, I was not really a learner. All through high school, I, I, it took me five and a half years to graduate from college. So I was just, I, I was very, very average. Very average student. Was never really dedicated to getting better. And, you know, up until the time I was 35, 36 years old, I really didn't care. Lisa, we can't do it without you, girl. Thank you for joining. Uh, I was really never serious about self-improvement. I really just didn't. I wrote this note down. I really, it took me so long because I didn't know. I didn't know how self-improvement could change my life. I just didn't know how important thinking differently would be for me to to change the way I was thinking. So um, I didn't really get serious about this until I was about 36 years old. And um, at that time, I was introduced to, to Michael Burt, and then I really... I really got focused on self-improvement. So a lot of people, I don't think they even know how to to to, uh, to improve themselves. You know, I, I hung out with some friends that uh, that they probably didn't believe in self-improvement, and they were an influence on me. Then I had some friends like Scott Nagy who hung out with all of us who didn't really need self-improvement because he was already so much smarter than us. But uh, a lot of people are lost out there. And I, I'm one of those people that were, I was lost for so long. I didn't even realize how lost I was. I didn't know. And uh, after I got, it's called stinking thinking. That's right, Jeff Shot. I didn't even realize how much I was underperforming my potential. You know, I was a very average person, very mediocre. And I thought, you know what? One of these days, I always thought, one of these days I'm going to get serious. One of these days I will I will start trying. One of these days I will hit my potential. And it didn't take, it didn't really happen until uh, John C. Jones, thank you for joining, friend. It didn't really hit me until I was probably 35, 36 years old. And uh, things were so bad. I was telling a guy in our office a story today. Just uh, big A, Adam Wright, my best friend's on here. Michael Burt, my other best friend's finally joined us. Hey, I appreciate you guys joining and sharing. I was telling a guy to my mama. Thank you, mama. Mama, don't get defensive and start taking up for me throughout this whole process, okay? Because straight from the gut is about just me being very... I get my confidence from emptying my gut. And what I mean by that is I, I like to be fully disclosed. I like, I mean, whatever I'm thinking, I don't hide anything back. I hope you're having full. I hope you're having fun in uh, Hawaii, Kyrie. I saw Jackson Sloan today, by the way. But I was telling a friend uh, in our office today. He's new in the business, 
and we were just sharing like old stories. And I remember in the recession, I mean, it was a really, really, really bad recession in 2009. And if you weren't in real estate, I don't know if you know how bad it got. I mean, to see the people that were struggling, to see the people that didn't make it, it would really just blow your mind. And I remember, I think I had maybe five rental houses at the time. And it got so bad that I was uh, I was taking the rental money, and I had a loan. But uh, she did spoil me. My mama did spoil me. I will say that. Um, I was I, I was making no money, and I was living off the rents coming in. Therefore, I'm behind on payments on these houses, and. Uh, you know, there's five of them, and some of them had like first and second mortgages. I remember at John Jones Real Estate, we had eight, six, seven. That was a call that, uh, that was calls that would come into the office for leads. And back in those days, we, we would uh, rotate. And I remember Tom Cribs, he made a joke about, hey, I don't want eight, six, seven, because I don't want all the bill, I don't want to answer all the bill collectors for Tommy. That's how bad it was. I mean, I had so many people calling me, so I didn't have any option. I got a loan. Frank Gall, that's right, weather man. I got a loan. That's you know who I'm talking about, John. I had to go get a loan from this guy to help really get my properties from being being foreclosed on. And these loans really were like, um, the way he had it set up, it was like a 25% interest payment back. And it took me about three years to pay back all the money that I borrowed. And I mean, it was, it was a substantial amount of money. Shylock, I don't know what that means, big guy. But uh, I, I remember having to repay so much money. And I was telling my buddy that story today about, hey, I understand how bad things can be. I know how, how what it's like to have to go to your buddy Kira's to eat dinner because you're waiting on a commit your one commission check. That's right, big guy. It was a lot of money. Uh loan shark, that's right, he got me, but I didn't have an option. I mean, it was it was that hey Adam, I was buying washers and dryers. You know what uh, I was doing back then? My life, how screwed up it was. But I know what it was like, and I was telling him, I was sharing him my story, and I'm not ashamed of it because I learned so much from it. Bunny and bear. <laughs> I don't know if Kira can see that. But um, so all this stuff finally got uh, to the point to where you're either going to be motivated by one or two things. It's either, uh, it's either uh, going to be <laughs> pain or potential. And uh, this is when Tony Woodall came into my life, and... Last week, I don't know if Tony was on here, but Tony, I, sh I shared a great testimony to you and how you were one of the very first people that really started t talking to me about what true confidence was and where confidence really came from. And it was all internal. And I was so worried about uh, all these external things. I remember sitting in a uh, in a living room and uh, telling you, hey, I want, I want to be John Jones. That's who I wanted to be. I wanted to be that guy. And you, you looked at me and said, no, you want your best life for you. So uh, Tony Woodall was, he was the first person that saw something in me that, hey, I appreciate the likes. Because, uh, I mean, it ain't easy to tell everybody what a screw up you were. But, but, I, but I'm very open about how much of a screw up I was. So Tony Woodall was the first person that got me thinking, hey, Bill Wilson, I saw your new listing coming up. Bill Wilson has a new listing coming up. It looked like he's on Lytle Street. So uh, good listing if you want to be downtown. But uh, Tony was the first person that really helped me understand a clear, articulated how self-improvement could help because I, I was talking to one of my best friends, Joey Richardson, this morning, and we were just talking about how so many people are controlled by their emotions. And I remember Tony helping me decipher through what emotions were. So what I'm getting at is all this led to me wanting to get better. That was the start. And when you start somewhere, you feel like it takes so long to get to where you're wanting to go. Stormy Crook, my man, how are you, buddy? Love your honesty. Thank you. 
my old buddy, Andrea Frost. Hope you're doing well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm being very honest about how bad things were, but Tony Woodall was the first person that got me going in a direction of where I started craving more. That's right, Michael Burt. That's something I still tell myself. Just the feelings are real. That don't make them right. Uh, but uh, Tony got me into other things, and I started thinking from the inside out. Everything really matters from what, how we view ourselves. So this got me into self-improvement. And uh, I, th I believe everything comes down to you making a decision. And for me, it was, e it was easy because I was so hurt. I was so tired. I was motivated by pain. And uh, then it, be, it became a, a, a commitment for me to get better. I decided, man, I'm going to get better. And at the time, uh, uh, I think John brought in Michael Burt. And Coach Burt, I shared this last week, was uh, someone that I was really fascinated with what he knew. And I became, I became a sponge of what he was teaching us. We would go to breakfast. I was all, I was doing whatever I could to get myself uh, closer, as as Coach calls it. I was wanting more proximity to to him, and then he was one person that started influencing me. So my mind started changing as I was getting around other people that uh, had had a different mindset. They were thinking different. So number one, everything starts with a desire to. Uh, Craving success, craving success, get to it. That's right, Jeff. Everything starts with a decision, a commitment. And a commitment is really backed up by resources, by inconvenience, by, by it's, it's time, money, energy, effort. And I started making these commitments. At the time, I didn't really know I was making a commitment. Hey, Chelsea Thomas. Never too late. <laughs> hey, hey, Johnny. Let's not. Let's be nice to everybody. But uh, it is. It is a commitment. It was a decision. And again, this is probably. It became. A, it became. It was an addiction. A good addiction there is. Brittany Renee. It has become an addiction. You can attest to that. How often I'm looking at stuff. So number one, it starts with a. You've got to make a decision that hey, I'm going to do this. Whatever it is that you you make a commitment in your time and your money, they just dabble right out of my time. I bet you say the same thing. Hey, Amanda, how are you doing, friend? So, so number two, it was find a mentor, find a coach. Everybody needs a coach in life, ain't that right, Michael Bird? So, number two is find a coach. And uh, some people are going to say they can't afford a coach. Drinking whiskey. I'm drinking a Gentleman Jack for my sinus infection. I mean, I'm really start, starting to struggle here. Uh, it was getting a coach for me. And luckily, I had John, John, John Jones who paid for Michael Burt. And that was a big contract. That was a big contract for Michael. It was a big obligation for, uh, for John because uh, during this time, of course, things were not as good because we were going into that recession. So you can find coaches, you can find mentors, you can really find, uh, he did invest in his team. And you know what, Michael, you say this, look at what, and I hate to pat myself on the back, but if you would not have come into John Jones Real Estate, I probably wouldn't be here right now. I mean, it just probably would not have worked out that way for me. Um, so just, I don't know what you call that, Michael, but when one person turns out, in a group like that, it is worth it. But uh, Michael came in and uh, I didn't have to pay for it. I got to reap the rewards for John. He, he, he brought him in. And, uh, but if you, don't have, if you don't have the means to, ha to hire a coach, today you can always go into YouTube. Still making 26, that's right, Big A. You can find ways to get a mentor. You don't have to have your, I call Grant Cardone a mentor. I have not actually met him in person. I'm going to, but uh, I 
soak up his every word. And I believe you need to find one or two people because if you look out there and you've got multiple people that are influencing you, it does get confusing. John complains all the time when I walk in there and I've, I'm saying this or I'm saying that because I've heard this guy say this, this guy say that. It does get very confusing whenever you're listening to so many people. Hey, Ann Helen, thank you for joining so, number one, it is a decision that, hey, I've got to get better. I don't have another choice. Follow the GTT vlogs on YouTube. Thank you, Sparkle. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel because we're going to put more and more content out there. Number two, it is find a mentor, find a coach. And uh, what was my notes? You only want to you only want to have one or two people because you don't want to add the confusion. I got a coach, and because I got Michael Burt, he interviewed Grant Cardone, who really helped me explode my thinking. Ain't that right, Michael Burt? You get around people that think so big, it makes you think so much different. You've got to be around bigger thinkers. Because I, I remember thinking... I remember my th my thoughts used to be big, but my actions were so small. I had to find a way to get my actions bigger. See if there's any questions. Anybody have any questions so far? Where are you, Coach Burt? You on here, fella? And I appreciate everybody that's on here liking this. I appreciate the likes. I wish you would share this. So number one, it can't go big if little got you. That's right, Shane. Right, thank you, man. The big Kahuna. Thank you, Shane, for coming in uh, the studio the other day. It's always fun to have our people come in here. Big thinkers make us expand our thoughts. Belinda is a huge thinker, and I hear you may be joining a mega monster producer. You can't go big if little got you. Lance Smith, what was your first step in changing those thoughts into actions? Lance, my first thoughts were really, i got to give a lot of that credit to, of course, John Jones was the guy that always pushed me, but uh, Belinda, we need you in there, girl. Glad you're in there because you make everybody better. You're a huge rock star. Lance, uh, John Jones, helped. he always pushed me, but the, the teacher will not appear until the student is ready. And by this time, uh, Michael Burke really was very influential in my life. And Michael Burt said something to me one time I'll never forget. He told me he follows big time people. And whenever he sees them or whenever they tell him to do something, Lance, he said he just did it. He didn't question it. So uh, I, started, I started not uh, questioning things. And I always observed John Jones. I always observed other people that were close to me. And really when things, uh, I guess the first action step would be when I hired Katrina. What was your aha moment? You said I had to put it all together. <sighs> Big A, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that kind of stuff on here. My aha moment really started coming when, um, appreciate the love, whoever's loving it. I don't know if there's really an aha moment. I wish it clicked like that, but God, I wasn't smart enough to have an aha moment. I do think God kept telling me, do this, do this, do this. And my aha moments were over time. But uh, what really helped me explode, if I could come up with, uh, if I had, mom, uh, I went with John, the John Jones team at Caldwell Banker, Mama. But John, uh, but Adam, if I had to say the biggest aha moment for me again, I had to give so much credit to Michael Burt because he was around me so often, and I was watching what he was doing. I was like in the cockpit of his success, and when he told me he just did what big time people were doing, I started observing him. And one day we were riding around, and he told me. I to start doing a show. And I guess this has been about two years ago when I started doing my hometown, our boomtown. John Jones was the first guest on the show. And then I saw the power of how that attention would come to me. So my aha moment, uh, I had to get uncomfortable. So glad you brought bought me pizza. <laughs> um, 
my aha moment was when I saw how big this social media thing could get and how you could leverage people, how you could leverage people to uh, every big star start off as a little star who wanted to be big. That's right, Michael. I remember me and you, we had breakfast. We were riding around. And, uh, hey, Jared, buddy, how you doing, man? So my aha moment was when I made that commitment, I'm going to take this social media ser uh, stuff serious. So I, I, I really have gotten a lot of traction with social media. That's what's been my, my biggest thing. So that day uh, he said, hey, it was 500 bucks a month. Had to come up with a way to pay for that show. Status rail, uh, sales. Hey, that's right. Hey, are you still in my line, coach? So uh, number three, I'm gonna get on. To, I'm gonna get on to this. Please keep posting questions or comments or anything, and I hope uh, I've answered your question, Lance. But uh, the, to to get back to you, Lance, when I hired Katrina, that meant I had to go out and risk something of my own to start building something. And when Katrina came in there, she really helped my mindset of, hey, look at what she's doing. Look at how, what I should be doing. So number three, you got to spend time with people that you aspire to be. Lucky, luckily for me, I get to spend time with one of my heroes, John Jones, every single day. I get to come in and see a guy who really invented the team concept of Rutherford County. He was the most – it would be – John Jones was like the Alabama – Foot, college football program from probably the mid late nineties up until the time uh, Lance a ask any questions. Um, John was like Alabama, and the only reason why this changed, the only reason why John has stopped winning all these national championships is because he started his own company. And when John started his own company, he let people like me flourish. He let me flourish because he allowed us to start putting our own production totals in our own name. So I think in 2007, I think we sold, I think it was 360 houses. And at this time, I think our, I think John's production was so much bigger than like the closest competitive, like the top two or three closest competitors combined. That's how much bigger John Jones was than everybody. Jughead and Nate Shot, I always think big. That's right, Nate Shot. Yeah, but Joe, John Jones was so much ahead of his time. But again, I I let John down for so many years. I'm glad he kept me around because he really leaned on me to get better. And again, I just wasn't ready. I was not ready to do what he needed me to do. Belinda, hey, she is our new mega monster. Belinda Arinder is a... She, I think Belinda Arundel will do 70 million or so in production. She is our preferred lender. She is our go-to girl. And if you were to call her right now, you should probably answer the phone and get off this stream. But yeah, when it, you've got it, you've got to get around people that are like-minded. And for me, let's go back to the good old days. Good time, Tommy. I had more fun back in those days. Uh, this year it's a hundred million. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't insult you, Belinda Arinder, but I do think you can get to 100 million. But back when I was around all my friends that had good times, we were more focused on, I was more focused back then on a uh, Friday, Saturday night. I wanted to go out. I wanted to have fun. I wanted to go out and have find my girl for that weekend or whatever it was. And that's how all my friends thought. None of our friends were really worried about our work days or our work jobs because we all thought one day, one of these days, we're going to go out and we'll make money one of these days. Well, one of these days will never happen if you keep doing what you're doing. As Tony Woodall, as he says, you're going to change from pain or potential. Mine was pain. Mine was I got so damn broke I had to move in with my mom. Luckily, I had a good mom that didn't care what I did. I came home. That's right, Mexico. Hey, Richard Nice, our Alabama monster producer. Coach Burst, he, he's been talking about you. You've got our eye. 
Anytime you want to come up here and see what we do, Richard, you're more than welcome to come up here and do it. Another thing I would recommend everybody doing is um, getting around people that hold you accountable. That's right, Mama. Happy. I'm lucky. Hey, as my grandmother always said, your mama's all you got. You got hippie me. He misspelled that, Mama. But uh, you need to get around people that uh, will hold you accountable. And for me, so people like Joy Richardson would hold me accountable. Tim Dutton would hold me accountable. He would sit down and he would take time and he would... Uh, and, and Tim does this with a lot of people. I will give him credit. He will he will sit down and he'll look at your situation. And he always challenged me. You know, I didn't really I didn't really uh, understand consumer debt. I didn't understand depreciating assets. I didn't know how much that was holding me back. Any questions out there? Because I've really thrown three things out there at you. And I think I've been going about 30 minutes. So if you've got anything else that you'd like to squeeze in here, I want to answer any questions that you've got. And again, straight from the gut, the reason why I call this is because I I, I had the most confidence from uh, from uh, me being as transparent as I can. I don't want to hold anything back. So if there's any questions that you got, don't do that. Now you got to your, help yourself in the ass. Hey, we got a dog named Lucky, Jeff Shot. I don't know if you know that or not, but Lucky, where is Lucky, Brittany, Renee? I know he's around here somewhere. Lucky's in there with her. We got any more questions? But, uh, you know, I wish, I wish that I would have, uh, I wish I would have gone through a painful experience at a much earlier age in my life. 35 years old, then the economy, uh, it, it, it stalled so long. I wish this would have happened a long, long time ago. So if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, my, if I'm 43 and I'm talking back to my 30 year old self, the one thing I'm gonna tell you, or I would tell myself is to get very, very good at what you do. Doesn't matter what you do, but if you're very good, let's see, I, I'm in real estate. I'm a real estate agent in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And if I could have gotten a lot better at what I did, I would have made a lot more money sooner. Hey, Ryan Meffer, good seeing you the other night. Most people don't understand the debt puts a ton of, just because you make the payment does. Hey, you said that last week, Big A. Um, you're right. And, and I didn't understand how much cash flow going out it hurts your savings so much. So I'm gonna tell people, do not, don't buy things based off you can afford a monthly payment. My best friend Adam Wright just told you that. Try to force yourself into a discipline of paying for it in cash, or you just don't pay for it. Now, by the way, I'm not gonna sit here and be Dave Ramsey, but uh, he is right. I would go out and I would just, the thing, I think Tim looked at all my finances one time and I think the total debt I owed was $86,400. And it took me like maybe four years. Do not borrow money. You know, one day I'm going to tell people this, Adam. Uh, would you borrow money to go to college? If I had to, if I had to go to college today, I would not borrow. I wouldn't go. If I wanted to go into the business world, I would not borrow money. If I wanted to be a doctor, a lawyer, or some kind of a specialized person, I would not. I would not borrow money to go to college. Where it, uh, I mean, it just uh, the the biggest scam. One of the biggest scams going right now. The government is they they trick parents into saying, hey. Your kid has to go to school, and it's such an arms race. If my kid is not going to college, but their kid is going to college, we can't have that. We're going to do whatever it takes to get our kid out here. Where these wages haven't gone up, it does not justify coming into this world or coming into the business world with uh, that much debt. I think uh, if if you really wanted, I did say that last week, Brittany Renee. Now, Belinda Arinder, Kyle, I, I, yeah, I understand you may disagree with that, Belinda, 
But uh, back when we went to school, we're close to the same age. Do you understand what today's costs, what they're coming out, what kind of student loans they're coming out with, how much debt they're coming into? And Belinda, could you do your job? Would they let you do your job without a degree? Tim Dutton, by the time you get on here, I've been talking about you all night. Teresa, hey, I'm glad you came to my office. I'm glad I got to meet you, Teresa, retired military, and that was... That comment went, uh, it went real fast. Sorry. And, you know, some people are probably not going to agree with me on that. Well, you paid for it with no student loans, Belinda. But, hey, I'm a believer that I think it's a ripoff. It's a huge scam. Hey, I'm going to tell you what Tim Dutton did at, uh, boy, we got some great comments coming in. I can't hardly see them. Jeff shot Tim Dutton at 33 years old, took a huge risk on uh, that store, and that store gave him so much of a surge of income when he sold it. He'll say he hated the 13 years, eight months, and so many days and hours, but guy it was such a great, uh, it was such a great, uh, investment well Belinda can you get a job would you hire somebody right now Belinda Belinda let me ask you this would you hire somebody right now if they did not go to college but they did come work for you they, they worked for you from the time they were 18 to the time they were 22 23 maybe even 28 years old uh, would you hire that person if they didn't have a degree, but they worked for you for eight years? See, I think one day what's going to happen is somebody, hey, Leslie Denny, was Ryan Denny on here tonight? Belinda, would you hire Travis? I, I agree. Some people, for me, it was about the experience. You know, I had a great time. But... Back when I went to college, it could, I think it cost me $1,100 a semester. And that was for everything. That didn't include where I lived and, and food. Okay. Well, I understand, Drew. Hey, it's okay to be passionate about college. But it's okay if we disagree about that. I didn't see Ryan Denny either. I need him on here. But um, Ronnie Martin, my guy. Lip Gallagher. I don't know what... Now, Ronnie is a huge student. I don't know what he thinks about this, but what Ronnie, what do you think about kids that have to, to go into debt to go to college? But hey, Belinda, back when we went to school... back I love you too, Ronnie Martin. Back when we went to school, I don't know... I don't, I don't think they can afford school like they could when we went. You can't learn any hustle, Belinda. I think college was good for me in some respects. I, I don't. I, I think what me and John are saying is, uh, first off, I don't think uh, you can. It, the the payments are. So, it's so much more expensive to go to school today, and getting a student loan. Dale Junior, man, I want to know what this. Uh, never a waste time. Okay, Ronnie, I understand. I will not disagree. With you, Ronnie Martin, Dale Childress. I don't know what you're doing with this master closer stuff, man. I'm interested. I may even buy something from you, Ronnie. Let me ask you this though: Is it a waste? Is it a waste to go to college if you're going to go out and get a job where it's college has gone up, but have wages in our area gone up? Master closer. Look, hey, I saw your site. I saw your site, Dale Jr. It was really cool, by the way. My question about getting a degree, is it about the education or is it about the networks you develop? 
because the people that get a business degree, they just come out there nowadays and I don't know what really separates them. I tell you what separates people is who they know. Hey, thank you, buddy. Hey, Dale, I'm going to, uh, me and my girlfriend will be in Miami. We're going, I'm going to meet Cardone on April the 13th. So maybe we can hang out with you. I think we're going to stay in Aventura or somewhere, somewhere right in that area. Maybe we can meet up. Ryan Denny, buddy. Your mama's on here. We've been looking for you. But uh, I guess we're off topic a little bit. But uh, I will say this, Ronnie. I never, never regret spending money on myself to get better. Never, never have. And I think the best investment you can ever make is on self-improvement. So uh, well, what's better? Going and going. Uh, would you rather have somebody that has gone through a professional sales program or somebody that went and got some type of a degree in a college? Because I feel like I feel like uh, most companies are desperate for people that can sell, that can bring in revenue. That's my opinion. And the and, and I don't know what colleges are really preparing people when they come out. It proves they can go somewhere and they stick to a commitment and they come back. But I don't know how that qualifies them. I don't know how. As Coach Burt might say, if it gives them any type of a differential advantage when they come into the workplace, so I don't want to, uh, I don't want to say don't go to college because it was one of the greatest experiences I could ever do. If you want to invest in yourself, what will you invest in? Hey, everybody that's on here, Dell Ch Dell Childress is a guy. He worked down there at uh, Grant Cardone's office. You are to follow his stuff, especially if you're in sales, because let's give you a shout out, Dale. Master Closer's coming out. Success is who you hang out with. Oh, long term. Man, I believe your networks are so, uh, they're so important. Look at my uh, Michael Burt. He's like a doctor. He says, sell something, solve a problem, create unique value. Michael Burt, does colleges do that for you today? Thank you, Kathleen. What was a favorite book that you read that was helpful? Um, How to Win Friends and Influence People was a huge book for me because it allowed me to understand how other people felt when I was communicating with them. That was huge. Uh, Michael Burt, my buddy's got a new book out. Every, uh, what's the name of that new book, Coach? I'm in, I think chapter two is about me. I just found this out. I guess it's the new everybody needs a coach in life. You know, my best friend there, Adam Wright, he went and he got, uh, uh, you said that before, Dale, Think and Grow Rich. Uh, Adam went and got his MBA. I don't know how much, maybe it helped him. I don't know. I think his, his job he had uh, helped him pay for it. Well, hey, I do believe you get, degrees are helpful. I, I don't want to say they're not, but stay, the, the student loans that bother me. Michael Burt, you have a million-dollar company. You are a highly educated guy. Would you hire somebody to sell without a college degree? I, I, don't, I don't think that matters. I really don't. I want somebody that can sell. And I mean, I don't think college teaches you how. But by saying that, that does not mean I'm taking anything away from uh, a degree. Hey, everybody needs a coach in life. Chapter two, good time, Tommy, turn around. When people ask me why I'm such an advocate for Coach Burt, it's because of what an impact he's made on my life. <coughs> If you ever get around somebody that totally changed your life, and there's probably four or five people, and you know what, a few of them are on here. If they change your life so much, you shove them down people's throat. Dale Jr., I remember that day you came over to our office when you were up here in Murfreesboro that time. <clears throat> I was impressed by your scripted. And you know what, Dale, I've never had told you this, but... Uh, I bought a card on you because of you. 
That's right. You focus on results. <coughs> Man, I'm getting sick, guys. Apologize. Clarity. Shane Ray, do you understand what clarity is? Forever I didn't, and I'm so thankful I did. Hey, uh, Dale, I actually bought Cardone for uh, Cardone U for life, so now uh, I just re-upped, and I've got it forever, man. Hey. My girlfriend's in there on the phone now. Thanks to Coach Burt. Yeah, clarity is something I didn't have forever. I didn't, and I didn't really know, uh, I didn't know why I was doing what I was doing. Kathleen, thank you for, be sure to follow GTT uh, on my YouTube page. We're trying to grow that. I've been going about 45 minutes, and it's really, it's almost my uh, bedtime. Is it Bert? Is it Bert being accountable? Hey, thank you, big guy. Hey, sick. Hey, you're sick. Sick, man. Uh, Michael, Bur uh, I don't know what you're asking, Jeff. Re uh, ask that question one more time. I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. Great. So, hey, Michael Bird, I appreciate it. Hey, let's talk about the Good Time Tommy turnaround. Boy, I, I, that right? Is that really the name of the chapter? I'm gonna have to buy some books. That's a great point, Richard. It doesn't. Hey, where did Belinda go? Are you still on here, Belinda? I'm not saying I don't believe in going to college, by the way. But, you know, I think at one time a, a degree probably did separate you. But I don't think it does anymore. <laughs> hey, uh, Coach, where can people buy this book? I need to buy some books. The power of broke. Man, I know what the power of broke's all about. I live the power of broke. I live the power of being half-assed for too long, Dale Jr. Hey, buddy, thank you for tuning in. Chapter is fine and fill your search your starts with. It's the new Tommy. Belinda got mad. She got... <laughs> Where did Belinda go? We need her to get back on here. Coach Burt, the new book. Hey, I'm I'm gonna buy that book, and I'm gonna um, the people that shared it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give them the book. So whoever shared this stream will get a Coach Burt book. Have you got the book, uh, Brad Elam? Brad Elam, I will give you a plug because you're in here participating. Um, I think you sold forty houses. Man, I don't know if people understand how hard that is to sell that many houses around here and you just got into the business in March. Free battle plan. <laughs> Kimberly. I regret not going to college. I got lucky to work for a great company. You know, hey, you're always enthusiastic about your uh, company, Kim. That's great. Late over here on call. I'll call you tomorrow, big guy. Hey, big A, follow Dale Childress. He lives uh, down the road in the Miami area. I want to get master closer. I want to I get in on that. Everybody that shared, I really appreciate it. It's about my bedtime. And every Thursday at 8 o'clock, I bring you straight from the gut. Hey, I'll call you tomorrow, Big A, whenever we're about to walk in and do a little breakfast. Jeff Shot, does it hurt you and your lifestyle to change? See ya. Hey, Randy, thank you, buddy. Jeff Shot, does it hurt you? Does it hurt you? So to change what you're doing, Target. Hey, buddy, I appreciate your weather, man. Does it hurt? I don't know exactly... Hey, Ronnie, I appreciate it, buddy. Ronnie, hey, I'll, I tell everybody uh, about... Here, I, 
I don't know how to articulate this right now, but if you can ever find somebody that can help you understand how to make more money, and if they're a banker, it does not matter what their rate is. So that's the one thing I want to tell anyone out there that's rate shopping, because nobody, I don't want to say nobody, but there's very few people in the real estate game that know how to make money better than Ronnie Martin does. And whenever you're beating him up because he's maybe a quarter point high, higher than what you can get it, you're, uh, you're really looking at things from a uh, limited perspective. Think bigger because Ronnie Martin has helped me understand how to make money as much as anybody out there. So, guys, I'm about to shut this down because it's my bedtime. I got to be in the gym in just a few hours, it seems like. But every Thursday night, I'm going to bring you straight from the gut. I want to have very interesting uh, content. It's usually always going to be about my shortcomings and what I've done to improve them and any comments that you got. Dale Jr., I do want to hook up with you in uh, mid-April, uh, hang out. Hey, we can talk about Ashland City, talk about old cars. But, uh, yes, Jeff, it was, it, it, as I got older, it was not as much of a battle. It got a little bit easier because I got away from a lot of the friends that were making it hard. So, it's so, uh, it was a lot easier whenever you're around people that they're, my interest changed. It's on, Dale Jr. Dog Walk Talk. Hey, are you still doing Dog Walk Talk? Or is, um, what's his name? Man, I forgot his name. Your buddy. The great. Hey, thank you, Kim. Linda Hart, you're on here as I'm, as I'm closing up shop. Uh, Ron Papke, I saw him doing Dog Walk Talk. Was he down at your house? <laughs> And I love Ron. Man, Ron is very open. I love his story. And I know you've you've obviously helped him with his story, Dale. I really, really, really like hearing his story. But, Jeff, uh, have a year worth of him. Hey, Travis, I appreciate it, man. Hey, I love you too, Linda Hart. Yeah, I saw it the other day when he did it. But every Thursday we're going to do this, or I want to do it, because I'm very passionate about helping people that um, struggled. And if there's, a, if there's people out there that never struggled, they may not resonate as much with what I'm talking about, but I struggled. I mean, I really struggled as far as getting my act together. Party at the new house. Ryan, Denny, uh, man, you're always welcome over here, buddy. But uh, we're still waiting on all of our furniture to get here. So right now, if you came over, you had to bring your own chair. Ain't that right, Brittany Renee? I think we got a couch coming, so she says. I think we got a dining room table coming. So, um, Ryan, we ain't far. I think you're over in Berkshire, so we're not. I think I'm probably three miles away from you, man. Uh, but uh, Jeff, I don't want to leave you hanging, man. The 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 biggest struggle for me was um, it wasn't as much letting go with that. It was much more about. Um, putting things into action. That's why, because I always wanted to do something, but I never really was around people that would help me put that plan that I wanted into action until uh, Michael Bird. Tony Woodall, Michael Bird. Come on, man. Come on over here, Ryan Denny. Ryan Denny knows how to get attention. He's one of the uh, young folks and long, it was good to see you today. Ooh, we're gonna have a taco party. So Ryan, Denny, you can come to our taco party. And so before I get off, unless there's more questions that come in, there's three things I wanna tell everybody. Maybe you join late. Um, you really gotta make a decision that you wanna get better. Everything. Uh, everything starts with a decision, a commitment. This is your most liked video yet. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, find a mentor. You got to find somebody. And I believe if you listen to too many people, what happens is you get really confused. I believe you really want to find one or two people. For me, it was Michael Bird, it was Grant Cardone. Those two people changed my life, other than the people that I was already around. Uh, 
Spend more time with people that you want to be like. I mean, I've, I'm going to go spend, uh, I don't even know how long I'll get to sit in this guy's office, but I mean, I paid uh, $5,000 to go meet Grant Cardone. To have 15 minutes of his time to sit there and ask him questions. Because, hey man, I appreciate it, Jeff. Now, Jeff, I appreciate um, how much, how uh, all the kind words, man. Because when you tell me this stuff, it, it really helps me want to keep going. So, Jeff Shot, I appreciate everything you tell me. On a scale from 1 to 10. Corey Jacobs is the most handsome man that I've ever seen in person. Somebody ought to quote that. Corey Jacobs is the most handsome man. He's like six foot one, six foot two. He's in perfect shape. He's got a perfect jawline, perfect feature. He could be a model. That's right, Dale Jr. You got to commit first. Everything starts with a commitment. Will Webb, we got to get together soon, man. Thank you for getting on here, buddy. I appreciate you. And another thing, uh, what took me so long is I just wasn't ready. I was not ready to commit. I was not ready. I was just not ready to, uh, I wasn't ready to get better. I didn't know. I didn't even know how my life would change if I started getting better. I was so immature. If I could, if I, my biggest mistake is not finding out all this stuff at 25 instead of 35 or 36. I wish I could go back. That's the one thing I wish I could do. I wish I could go back and, and get more serious about self-improvement at, at a younger age. So, I mean, you can, it's so easy to get into this. There's so many people out there that will, people don't know what they don't know, do they, Dell Jr.? Dell Jr. is a guy from Ashland City who moved down to Miami. Sold his uh, car garage up there in Ashland City. Now he's down there living the good life in Miami. Hey, Katrina, what are you doing on here so late? I thought you'd been bad by now. Thank you for the ride home tonight. And thank you for everything you do, Katrina, the storm. But I am about to get off here because uh, it's my bedtime. Do we have any last-minute uh, questions before I shut it down? And don't forget, next Thursday night at 8 o'clock, that's 9 o'clock Eastern Time, we do Straight from the Gut. Also, Real Estate 101, Real Estate, hey, why are you on here so late? Congratulations, buddy. 25 cities. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, guys, I'm going to shut it down. Everybody that's like this, comment it, share it. I really appreciate it. I am going to buy the, the shares, whoever shared this, one of Coach Bird's books. Chapter 2 is about me. I didn't know that until today. So um, share if you're going to get a free book from GTT. Reading YouTube. Find people. Find people out there and study them. Thank you, Dale Jr., uh, find people that you want to be like and, man, really, really absorb what they do, if that makes sense. There's so many places uh, that, you can, that you can go to and find out more information about those people. Hey, Coach Herzer, see you tomorrow at breakfast, hopefully. First shot, that's, that's a, uh, a nonprofit here in Murfreesboro that – my, one of my goals is to get much more involved in helping first shots. So that's something, that's something I want to do. Andy Herzer is a, a former college basketball coach who has decided to give his life back to underprivileged kids or people that need a mentor. That's the, that's the people we need to look up to is people like Andy Herzer. Remember that big headed man has your back. You'll be. Good night, Jeff Shot. I know he's got my back, Richard Neese. Come on by, Richard Neese. Well, I don't know if we're going to do the 5K. It's going to be hard to do it. I want to do it, Katrina, but I, I, we're going to have to find ways to uh, we're going to have to find ways to um, to get money back to first shot.
That's my goal. I want to raise money for a charity, and First Shot is my number one charity. So it's what I want to do. You know, whenever people talk about not wanting to make money or money's not important to them, it is selfish. And it's selfish because of how many other people you could help. Like this morning, I will say this about John Jones. I doubt the guy's still on here. But, um, hey, I love you, Renee, Brene Renee. Uh, John Jones goes out and he gets money for people. I don't know if you know anything about Oakland High School football, but I saw John Jones literally commit months of going and asking people to to donate money to that school for that for that uh hey thank you dale john John was calling up people and asking them for money and man it is no fun to call up and ask for money this morning at breakfast he was asking me to help this uh Help this wrestler that may be on the Olympic team. That's what we are. We are to chip. If we could all chip in and and give uh, the Boykin kid that's going to be hopefully an Olympic wrestler one day. If we could just all chip in together and give that guy. I don't know if you've ever given something to a cause. I don't know if you know what that feels like, but it's probably one of the best feelings you can ever have is to help out somebody. So. Um, I want to be able to help more people, and and you can't help people unless you make more money. I mean, that's, or unless you can influence more people to 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 do that. But this morning, that Boykin kid came in there, and I could barely look him in the eyes because I didn't donate to him, and I feel like I should. So, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know if people understand you. John Jones is somebody that makes a tremendous amount of money, but uh, he gives a lot of money. And he goes out and he gets money for other people. And that's that's one of the things I want to do. And that ain't that's no fun. That's not easy. It uh it can be embarrassing. It's just something that you do not want to do. But we need more people like John Jones out there giving back. We don't want to stop giving. Everything about our country, about our world is about giving to somebody else. So guys, I've been going one hour. And I'm going to shut this down. If you have any questions, please post. Or if you want to um, email me, it's Tommy at gtthomes.com. I hope Kathleen's not up still watching this. I'll probably have driven her crazy. But, Dell Jr., I've got your number, buddy. I will be reaching out to you before uh, before I come down to Miami. That, that trip was booked today. So, Jeff Schott, man, I appreciate you being on here. Everybody that's liked, everybody that's shared, a great, like, Kathleen, what are you still doing up? Damn it. Sorry for dragging you up so late. But it's 9 o'clock. That means we all got to go to bed. It's 10 o'clock over there on the Eastern Standard Time. So everybody that's watched, please continue. Please post questions. Please let me know if there's uh, any anything that you'd like to talk about. My purpose is to, uh, is to build a moat, build build um, whatever you want to call it, a moat or a river around Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I want to be the number one foremost authority as the digital expert in Murfreesboro. So if you're thinking social media in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, if you're thinking real estate, you got to think GTT. But it's time for me to shut it down, everybody. Uh, I hope you have a great night. Connie, my cousin, I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're doing well, but it's time for me. It's time for me to go to bed. Everybody have a great night. Thank you. Next Thursday, 8 o'clock, straight from the gut with GTT.